uh, check up our lineup today here on the now. It is a huge development for the more than a million people in the U.S. with peanut allergies. How a first of its kind treatment now approved by the FDA works. And betting was big over Super Bowl weekend, but does gambling have a dark side? Well, we're taking a look at what's being done to treat gambling addiction across the country. And you may have accounts online that you forget about how hackers are now using that information to their advantage more often. Thank you, Chris. I'm Amanda Starantino, and you're watching the Now Indy. Indianapolis police are unfortunately off to a busy 2020 and an even busier February. Though it's only day three of the month, investigators are already looking into four homicides, the most recent today. As RTV6's Troy Washington shows us, the pace that we are off to is not only disturbing for community leaders, it's also pushing them to figure out how to turn things around. A deadly weekend kept rolling right into Monday, making IMPD wonder what's going on in the city of Indianapolis. It's concerning. It's also um, very disappointing. IMPD Aaron Hamer showed up to the 1300 block of Riley Place at the Rowney Terrace Apartments just after 1030 a.m. While telling RTV6 the man died after being shot at the complex, he didn't hesitate to point out that crime, specifically murder, seemed to be happening far too often. This is homicide number 20 for us. There's a lot of ways that we um, we can handle dis disagreements here in the city, and uh, we have a lot of individuals who are determining to use violence, and it's, it's very disheartening. Reverend Charles Harrison is with the 10-Point Coalition. He says right now, the numbers don't lie. This is certainly a very troubling trend. We are well ahead, ahead of last year's pace, and, and it looks like if we don't slow this down, we're certainly going to break a, another homicide record. His solution, like Hamer, he thinks it comes down to resolving issues without resorting to reaching for a trigger. We got to take the, the conflict resolution, um, you know, training to the streets. He believes people are picking up guns hastily out of frustration. And the only way to reduce violence is to meet them where they are. If they're hanging out in the street corners or on the blocks, then that's where we need to be at in trying to address these issues. You hear out here on the streets what's going on, who may be beefing with one another. Harrison wants to squash the beef before it leads to murder, and grieving families are left to bury more victims. He says breaking the cycle is the only way to make a change. Working for you, Troy Washington, RTV6. And according to the 10 Point Coalition, there are a few factors that contribute to violence in neighborhoods. Lack of resources for youth and job opportunities play a large role. Well, three western Indiana counties hit by excessive rainfall last year have been declared primary natural disaster areas by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. That means agricultural producers in Fountain Park and Vermilion counties who suffered losses caused by excessive rain that occurred after March 1st of 2019 may be eligible for emergency loans that can be used to meet various recovery needs, including replacing essential items such as equipment or livestock. Kevin. Uh, the rain that's arriving tonight, much, much lighter than uh, any downpours that we've had so far this winter. That's been the major factor, hasn't it? It's more rain than anything else. Looking to the west, I saw some sunshine. You did too today. That's one factor boosting that temperature all the way into the 60s where we're at now. Some sprinkles, maybe intermittent wipers at best if you're driving around uh, this evening in the metro area. More steady rain, a little more widespread and a little heavier. We'll come into western Indiana and then zip to the north and east. That will increase the overall coverage of rain showers between now and 11 o'clock. Living in the moment, it's pretty good. 67 in Bloomington, 2 degrees cooler in Terre Haute, Lafayette in the low 60s. Only in the northeastern portion of the viewing area are temperatures still in the 50s. Here's what happens. Showers develop. The winds will still gust over 20 miles per hour. Temperatures really won't change a whole lot. They'll cool off, drop out of the 60s, but still be in the mid 50s at 10 o'clock tonight. The Iowa caucuses taking place tonight in gyms and community centers are considered the true start of the 2020 election. The process of caucusing, it's different than primary elections much of the country uses, but Newsy's Stephanie Lee Bergen explains how it'll work in Iowa tonight. Voters will gather at community centers, churches, schools, and private homes to participate at one of the state's over 1,600 precinct locations. Most people will be focused on the Democrats Monday night. Their caucus goers will first hear some introductory messages, instructions, and candidate pitches. Then they'll divide into groups around the room to declare who they think the party's nominee should be. But that's just the first vote. 
Any candidate who doesn't get at least 15% support is deemed non-viable. That person's supporters then have a choice. They can switch to stand with an already viable candidate, smaller groups can combine to reach the viability threshold, or they can remain uncommitted. The results of this second vote determine the winners. Republicans will also be caucusing in Iowa this year, but their process is simpler. Caucus goers will vote for their candidate of choice by writing a name on a piece of paper and the votes are tallied statewide. With President Donald Trump currently in the White House, he's all but guaranteed to get their votes. Well, let's turn to the Now News Feed. YouTube is taking steps to make sure that the election-related content that you watch is real. YouTube announcing that it'll remove any content that's been doctored or manipulated to mislead voters. The Education Department is changing its tune about what information colleges can give the census. The census is counting students in college-run housing this year. And at first, the Education Department said schools cannot give information on students' race or sex. But now the department says the information can be given out as long as it doesn't identify a student. Well, a comparison website for student loans and other financial products is paying up to the FTC. LendEDU is in trouble for deceptive rankings and fake reviews. The FTC said the company sold its rankings to the highest bidder. Toyota unveiling new technology that could stop a really bad mix-up on the roads. The tech helps stop accidental acceleration. That's when a driver mistakes the brake for the gas. Well, the technology looks at how hard someone presses the pedal to determine if they really meant to hit the other one. All right, ahead in our lineup here on the now, a first of its kind treatment for peanut allergies. It now has FDA approval. Well, this could just be the beginning, how it could also help people with other types of food allergies in the future. Days from 4.30 to 7. Welcome back to the now. Indeed, today kids came together to help kids along with a little help from the Colts Blue and the Colts cheerleaders. They all gathered at Gleaners Food Bank to assemble more than 1,000 backpacks to feed hungry kids on the weekend. Schools provide meals to at-risk kids during the week, but what happens on the weekends? Backpacks help fill the gap. SpaghettiOs and Meyer also helped support today's effort. Don't forget about each face of hunger. Every back sack that you pack is going to a kid at another school. So there's a, what I call a face of hunger with each back sack. So think about the other kids who will get that back sack on Friday and take it home. And because of your volunteer work here today, they'll be fed over the weekend. In addition to the back sacks, Gleaners helps support 56 food pantries and schools across our area that provide fresh produce, frozen meat, and other healthy items to feed the whole family. Chris. The FDA has just approved a drug to help with life-threatening peanut allergies. It's called Palforzia, and it's the first food allergy treatment of its kind. It's a tablet with peanut flour. Now that flour is poured on food before eating. The tablet contains about 1 300th of a peanut. Patients eventually will work their way to larger amounts until they can finally eat an entire peanut. Researchers say that the medication, well, the goal here is to get a patient's body used to peanuts. The goal is not for you to go home and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but to prevent an allergic reaction. So in case you ate peanuts by mistake, you don't have a severe life-threatening reaction. The medication has to be taken under certain conditions. Patients must have a full stomach. They can't exercise after taking it. And they can't take it if they're sick or stressed because it could cause other reactions. Researchers say that this medication is helping develop other treatments for more food allergies like milk, eggs, nuts, soy, and wheat. They're going out to eat and they're having lots of allergic reactions because they're having trouble reading labels and getting cross-contamination. This should protect you against those level of cross-contamination. So they should help a little with the anxiety or the concern that, hey, I can't go out to eat. Now, while the FDA has approved this drug, researchers say many patients still are at risk of having a reaction and they should carry an EpiPen. Now, many also suffer from stomach problems. Many patients get itchy mouth, so it is important to talk to your doctor about the risks and the benefits before taking it. Well, let's get back to our lineup here. Betting, of course, was really big over Super Bowl weekend, but let's face it, gambling does have a dark side. We're looking at what's being done to treat that across the country. Our TV6 is working for you. 
Let's start the now news feed with Kobe Bryant's high school jersey returned. The jersey was stolen in 2017, then a collector in China bought it. Now that jersey's been returned to Lower Marion High School outside Philadelphia. In recent years, women have gained more seats on corporate boards in the United States. Now, more than a quarter of board seats are held by women. That's up from 18% in 2015. At the same time, the amount of women on board leadership positions stayed about the same. That's according to research firm Equilar. Well, multiple buyers now own Forever 21, the clothing brand selling for $81 million, the company filing for bankruptcy in September. Well, from the commercials to the halftime show, let's get to Andy Taylor today, tracking the things from Super Bowl Sunday that still have us talking today. It's the biggest sports event of the year. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Super Bowl, I think, is one of those great moments when people really come together. And so whether it's about their favorite team or about the ads, it, we see extraordinary outreach from fans who are looking to Google and YouTube to just help them experience the big game in a more meaningful way. We talked with YouTube's Vice President Tara Walport-Levy about the most searched Super Bowl topics. The halftime show being one of them. Funny enough, the biggest question was who's performing? We can't forget about the most trending commercials of the night. And then unpack it. You unpack it? Typically, it's the lighter, more humorous ads that are getting the, the watches and rewatches and shares on game day itself. Baby! Coming! Amazon's commercial, What Did We Do Before Alexa? With Ellen DeGeneres and Portia DeRossi takes the top spot. What do you think people did before Alexa? Facebook's commercial highlighting its Facebook groups with an appearance by Chris Rock and Sylvester Stallone came in second. Who'd you expect? I don't know. Me? And Chiefs Groundhog Day commercial featuring actor Bill Murray rounded out as top three. <laughs> Towards the end of the game, as the Chiefs made their comeback in the last quarter, there was one player that was searched the most. We did see Patrick Mahomes as the number one search player. I bet, though, that that might have actually taken place in the fourth quarter when he uh, presumably edged out Jimmy Garoppolo, who's number two. Last question of the night, probably from people who have little interest in the game. Who won the Super Bowl and what was the final score? All right, I gotta ask, did you watch the halftime show? Sure did. Clearly you watched the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But the halftime show, I don't know about you guys, but Jennifer Lopez and Shakira look pretty good. Yeah, because they're both 40s, 50 years old, right? I know, yeah. so they look amazing. So one of the most like trending social media topics was, what is their anti-aging routine? I believe it. I mean, that had to be one thing everybody's thinking about watching that show. But there's no answer, I think it's genetics. Probably is, probably is. <laughs> Annie, thank you. Fitness advocate known by Body by Jake wants to award three fitness centers to Indiana schools to help Hoosier kids get healthy and fit. Governor Holcomb announced today that Jake Steinfeld is bringing the Don't Quit campaign to the Hoosier State. Nominations are now open to bring fitness centers like these to Indiana from the National Foundation for Governors Fitness Councils. The foundation wants to award fitness centers to schools that use new and unique methods to promote student physical activity and wellness. Three Indiana elementary or middle schools will each receive a 100 thousand dollar fitness center from the foundation don't quit fitness centers have been already built in 32 states and washington dc indiana is one of four states getting them this year school nominations will be accepted until friday march 20th to get a nomination form go to nat-gov-fit-.org got it <laughs> got it <laughs> had to concentrate it on, on that for a second okay speaking of working out it's been outside that's been wonderful i bet you monon was alive yesterday Eagle creek park uh, any place you can name to get out and enjoy those temperatures that for the second day in a row set records in the 60s we've got the showers arriving now they'll continue to expand and hang with us through tomorrow by tomorrow night we start talking about the first opportunity for a wintry mix. We're on the northern edge of a system tomorrow night. It is Wednesday night that I think we'll have a stronger system and it'll have a bigger impact Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Right now, 66 in Indy, Bloomington, one degree warmer. We all have this in common as well, a warm wind direction. The wind will change direction over the next 24 hours and it will come out of the north. That will bring colder temperatures back into central Indiana and drop our temperatures uh, into the 30s. You can see one slug of moisture here streaming in fairly light. More to follow as you just see the line from Texas all the way
way up into uh, Indiana. As far as our temperatures tomorrow, warmer in the morning, colder in the afternoon. That wind will shift and start coming out of the north later tomorrow night. There's a little bit of a rain snow mix with rain to the south that moves away. Then we'll wait on a more potent system as we get to Wednesday night. Those are Wednesday high temperatures in the 30s, a little below average. And then four o'clock Wednesday afternoon to 7 p.m. See that burst of darker blue? That would be some accumulating snow. Anywhere northwest of Terre Haute to Indy to Muncie seems to have the best shot at getting uh, several inches of snow. Freezing rain may cut down on some of those totals for areas south and east of that. Gambling addiction is an issue getting attention, especially with the Super Bowl being yesterday. Alicia Nieves is looking at ways to address the problem. 85% of Americans have gone into a casino and gambled within the last year. For many, it's just a fun night out. But for others, it gets out of control fast. It's a significant public health problem. Keith White heads the National Council on Problem Gambling. It estimates about 2% or 6 million Americans have a gambling addiction that can be as gripping of an addiction as drugs and alcohol. The brain of a pathological gambler, someone with severe gambling problem, looks much more like the brain of someone who's addicted to cocaine. Someone whose mind and life was changed because of their gambling addiction is Byron Fogan. I lost everything including my freedom for a period of time. Fogan was once a successful lawyer. He had it all, a family, a nice home, nice cars, but then began gambling regularly in 2010. It was intoxicating. And you were able to escape whatever other problems you had by going to the casino and feeling like a big shot. The reality was is that the only reason why you were big shot is because you kept on losing all your money to that casino. Within three years, Fogan lost his law license, his home, and everything he had worked so hard for. The way it feels is, is just like you're falling into a hole and you're looking for a hold on the walls. And, and, and you can't grab it, you just keep calling. Rock bottom hit in August of 2013, and he got help. It's been almost seven years, and cleaning up the wreckage of my past has taken a lot out of me. But I can say on the other side of it is that I'm no longer a slave to my addictions. I get to talk about it, um, and it's my hope that what I went through, other people don't have to go through if they hear my story, and they know to reach for help at that first nip of problem. The National Council on Problem Gambling estimates $1.1 billion a year or 1% of legalized gambling is needed to help problem gamblers and further education on gambling addiction and awareness. But right now, 40 states spend only about $73 million and 10 states allocate no money. One of our most important points is trying to mainstream gambling addiction within other risk behavior and education. So when you get the um, discussion at home, at school, at church about you know sex, drugs, and rock and roll, make sure gambling's in there as well. I'm Alicia Nieves. Alicia, thank you. A new study's raising questions about what's in our water. The story starting the Now News feed. The Johns Hopkins study says that chlorine can make toxic byproducts. Researchers do recognize that chlorine is important when it comes to keeping our drinking water safe, but the new question is how much is necessary. Well, if you're trying to take your workouts to the next level, science says listen to music. The journal Frontiers in Psychology with a study to prove it. Researchers found that high tempo music boosts heart health benefits as well as effort. Now, if you have iPhone problems, one day you may have not have to go to the Apple store and wait in line for the Genius Bar. Apple's rolling out a pilot program where you can request to have an agent come to your home to fix your phone. Now it's being tested in big cities right now in New York and Los Angeles. Well, if you get your prescriptions from CVS, Rite Aid, or Walgreens, you want to listen to this because a new report says that large pharmacies may be putting patients at risk. This is according to the New York Times. Many pharmacists have written letters to state regulatory boards describing understaffed and chaotic workplaces. They say struggling to keep up with prescriptions, flu shots, and customer service can lead to dangerous medication errors. Now, experts are warning about a rise in potentially dangerous drug that kids can get online. Atisalam is being called a new alternative to Xanax. It's not approved by the FDA, so stressed out students are turning to the internet and ordering it from other countries. Now that means there is no way of knowing what's actually in it. The concern that we have is sometimes they don't know the source. It could be cut with fentanyl, and it's deadly when it's mixed with alcohol. It could be deadly. 
Now, the DEA says Atisalam is emerging on the illicit drug market in the United States. All right, finally in our lineup today here on The Now, we are seeing more breaches of our personal information, what people are doing, putting them most at risk.